Hello, I'm Adnan Erdoğan. In this video, I'm going to try to cover how a vacuum tube works using a water-driven amplifier as a model. My goal is to make the speech understandable even to people with no engineering or technical background. So to make the functioning easier to understand, I have designed, at least on paper, a water-driven amplifier. The water system is much more easier to explain and to understand, and therefore this analogy will help the listener to grasp the functioning of the uh, vacuum tube much better. I'm going to focus on two most basic types of tubes, diodes and triodes. I'm going to start with the diode, which, as the name indicates, has only two elements. Then, we're going to add a third element and make it a triad. The circle represents the glass enclosure of the tube. Then, there's the anode and the cathode. The anode is the positive electrode and the cathode is a negative electrode. There is also a heater, like represented like this, which is the romantic glow of the tube when it's turned on. In fact, its role is only to heat uh, the cathode. Sometimes this heater and the cathode are made as a single element then this single element is called the filament. In this case, we're talking about an indirect heating. So let's now connect the cathode to the ground. So this means that its potential is at zero. And apply a certain voltage to the anode, which is also called plate from time to time. So let's assume it is plus 300 volts. We also evacuate the air from this enclosure and create a good level of vacuum. When we heat the cathode, we increase the electron agitation on its surface and, and ease the detachment of these electrons uh, from the cathode surface by lowering its affinity, their affinity. When we apply this plus 300 volts to the anode, the negatively charged electrons start flowing from the cathode to the anode. And because there is vacuum inside it, they don't encounter any oxygen, nitrogen or water vapor molecules uh, during their travel from the cathode to the anode. Under these conditions, we obtain an electrical current expressed in amps, A, or milliamps, in the case of the vacuum tube. Diodes are conducting the electricity in only one direction, as you can see here. Therefore, their mo most popular use is in the rectifier circuits of vacuum tube amplifiers or other amplifiers or other devices. So, as you can see here, when the plate is turning to negative, then the negatively charged electron will not attract, will not be attracted by the plate anymore because they, they will be both negatives and the electric current will stop. Now let's draw a water reservoir. And a pipe attached to it. The height of this reservoir's water level 
determines the pressure at this point and also the flow, the, the amount of flow through the pipe. So in this manner, the height is analogous to the voltage applied to the anode and the flow is analogous to the current or amps. The, the flow expressed in cubic meters per hour or gallons per minute if you like is analogous to the amps or milliamps in the electric current. As you may notice in this configuration as in the diode water can only flow in one direction. The most popular diodes currently in production are the 5U4 and the 5AR4 tubes. Now let's move to the more interesting part of this presentation. By adding one more element to the diode, we're going to build an amplifier. The element that we're going to add is played, placed between the cathode and the anode, and it is called the grid. The grid, as the name indicates, is a metallic mesh that permits the current of the electrons through it, but it functions is to control the flow of this electron. And that's where we apply the music signal. Now let's leave the triad as it is at this moment and move back to our water system, hydraulic music system if you like. Now I'm going to draw the water reservoir one more time. And I draw the, the pipe attached to it a bit disproportionately large so that the elements that I'm going to add within it are visible to the camera. So now this is the scenario as in the diode. Now we're going to add the grid on it. The grid to be similar to the valve. I mean to, to the uh, triode, I'm going to make it as two plates, both having holes in it, one plate fixed and the other plate uh, moving, sliding from left to right. In a way, this grid, I mean, in a way this is a valve to control the water flow, but I made it with holes so that it looks similar to the grid of the tube. Its role is to control the water flowing through it. We will set the position of this top plate, which is the sliding plate, the other one is fixed, you remember, and so that there is a predetermined water flow flowing through it, and this water flow, predetermined flow, we'll call it the bias, bias flow. 